Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're diving into a fascinating question from a developer tackling the challenge of tagging letters in long character sequences. Our viewer is exploring whether the swap memory parameter in dynamic RNN can help manage quasi-infinite sequences. Welcome back to another technical video. Today we'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution that you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you find that resolution you need. Anyway, let's continue on. To address your challenge with long character sequences, let's first understand the concept of dynamic RNNs in TensorFlow. The swap memory parameter in dynamic RNN can indeed help with your memory issues. It allows TensorFlow to swap the RNN's hidden states between CPU and GPU memory, enabling the processing of longer sequences without running out of GPU memory. However, since you need access to the hidden states at each time step, using dynamic RNN might require some adjustments to your current implementation. To implement this, you can use the return sequences parameter in dynamic RNN, which allows you to retrieve the hidden states at each time step. Before proceeding, ensure you are comfortable with the changes needed in your code. This approach should help you work with entire sequences while managing memory effectively. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. The swap memory feature in dynamic RNN helps manage memory for larger sequences, but it doesn't allow for truly infinite sequences. It stores activations in CPU memory instead of GPU memory, making it seem like your GPU has more memory. However, you still need to consider the computational costs and potential host memory limits. To handle sequences of different lengths, use the sequence length parameter, which is actually an array of lengths. Remember, you still need memory equivalent to the longest sequence. For unidirectional RNNs dealing with long sequences, consider using stateful RNNs. Save the final hidden states of each batch to use as the initial state for the next batch. And guys, that's it. I hope this video has helped you and get you through to that resolution you needed. If it did, please, I'd appreciate it if you hit subscribe. Now, until the next time that you need technical help, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.